everyone, it's Jennifer from Auburn Yoga and Pilates. Tonight we're going to be doing a gentle yoga practice and we're going to focus on the neck and shoulders. So please join us. Okay, let's get started. We're going to start off seated in a comfortable position, whatever that is for you. You're going to lift up through the top of your head and you're going to ground down through those sitting bones. Relax your shoulders away from your ears and take a big inhale through your nose. And then slowly exhaling out of your mouth. And again, inhaling through your nose all the air you can fit. Exhaling slowly out of your mouth. And then one more time, inhaling through your nose all the air you can fit. And exhaling slowly out your mouth. Now try to keep that same depth of breath, but if you can, make it a nostril breath. So inhaling through the nose, exhaling through the nose. Try to make your breath fluid, but try to keep your breath deep trying to maybe use more of the capacity of your lungs than you generally do. You want to feel both your belly and your chest move on both the inhale and the exhale. And then bringing your attention to something that you would like to manifest into your day today. Or if you're doing this live, we're doing it in the evening, maybe you'd like to think of something you want to manifest into your day tomorrow. Don't worry about it being silly or frivolous. Just think about what you'd like to manifest. Maybe you'd like to connect with an old friend or a family member. Maybe you'd like an extra energy boost to help you work on that project that you started. Maybe you need that extra energy boost to actually start the project. But whatever it is, Try to start to create a picture of it in your mind. Maybe you see yourself on the phone with that friend. Maybe you see yourself working on that project. Whatever it is, making it as realistic as possible. And then adding more of your senses. Are there any specific sounds that are associated with where you are? any specific sense. Reflect on how you feel, just like you're really there. And then just sitting in this space for about two minutes, a little two minute meditation here.
starting to bring yourself back into the room and beginning to circle your spine. So tonight we are going to give a little extra attention to our neck and our shoulders. So if you're feeling restricted or tight in that area, it will be the perfect practice for you. And sometimes even if you're not aware of that tightness or that restriction, sometimes it is, it is there. So we'll see what we discover tonight. And reverse direction. And then holding it to the center. Inhale, sweeping those arms up. And exhaling that right arm down. Stretching that left arm up and maybe up and over. And then bringing that spine back to vertical in very gently allowing that ear to drop over to the shoulder and then bending that right wrist and pressing that palm toward the floor, bringing a little extra length through your neck and down your arm. And release, dropping that arm down. Inhale, sweeping those arms up. This time, allowing that left hand to drop down toward the floor. Reaching straight up or up and over, but stretching through that side body. And then very gently cradling the skull, coming back up to a vertical spine and allowing that ear to drop over to the shoulder and bending the wrist of the left arm and pressing that palm toward the floor. bringing it back to center, gently releasing. Now, paying attention to the way that you're sitting, because you, we will reverse it. Usually we do after our spine circles, but a little different today. Taking one leg, swinging it behind you. So for instance, taking that right leg, swinging it behind you, and then twisting to the left. And then, if you feel comfortable, allowing your chin to drop down towards your chest. Lifting that chin, sweeping that leg from the back, and then taking the opposite leg behind you. So, this time, that left leg comes behind you, twisting toward that right leg. And then if you're comfortable doing so, dropping your chin down towards your chest. It's not that your chin should rest on your chest. You're simply dropping it, 
trying to find a subtle lengthening through the back of your neck. And gently lifting that head, coming back into a seated position, but try to switch the way that you're sitting. So trying to come into that more awkward seat, if possible. Inhale, sweeping those arms up, letting those arms frame your ears. Now bending that right arm and grabbing just under that elbow. Inhale, sweeping those arms up and then switching sides. So bending that left arm. The left palm faces the upper back so that the palm is actually in contact with that upper back. Grabbing just below that elbow and gently encouraging that arm toward your ear. Inhale, reaching those arms up, exhaling those arms down behind you. Now, depending on the flexibility in your chest and in your shoulders, you can simply take those fists behind you, connect them as you're in your seated position, or you can take those palms together Align them with your spine. Either way, pulling the heads of the shoulders back, trying to open up that front body. Release those arms. Inhale those arms up. Exhale those fingertips just behind your head so that they're gently cradling that skull. And then lift your sternum up toward the ceiling, pull those elbows back and expand that front body, coming into a little bit of a back bend. And then exhaling and inhaling. So moving into little cat and cow poses. Now, you shouldn't at all feel like you're yanking your head. There's literally just a light touch of your fingertips to the back of your skull. And so that your head and your fingers are just moving in tandem. And the last one, coming up, extending those arms out to the side, dropping them down. This time, inhale, sweeping those arms up. Exhale, sweeping those arms down so that they are parallel to the floor. Now, giving yourself a hug, right arm goes over left arm. Trying to stack your elbows on top of each other, that may or may not be possible. Fingers grab hold right behind those shoulders, and again, optional, you can drop your chin towards your chest.
coming into an eagle pose, wrapping those arms, lifting them up off of your chest. And then twisting to the right, trying to keep the spine long. Bringing it back to center, unwrapping those arms. Inhale, sweeping those arms up. Exhaling those arms just about halfway down. And this time, left arm over right. Give yourself a hug. Grab the back of your shoulders. You can continue to creep those fingertips along the back shoulder if you have that range of motion. Drop the chin if that feels appropriate for you. Lift that chin, modify cross at those forearms. Lift those arms up, expand through that upper back or Clasp those arms for eagle arms. Some days you feel like an eagle, some days you don't. <laughs> and then twisting to the left. Bringing it to the center, unwrapping those arms, just a big breath in and a big breath out. One more time, big breath in and press that air away, exhale down, coming into an all fours position. So lining up those wrist creases so that they are parallel to the short end of the mat. Moving into some cat and cows. Moving with your own breath. Letting your head and neck just follow the natural alignment of your spine, not straining to look up, not straining to look down. And then holding a neutral spine and walking your hands forward to come into a puppy dog pose. So trying to keep those hips over those knees, really lengthening that spine. Walking those hands back up into an all fours position, bringing those big toe mounds together, Letting those hips fall back toward those heels, coming into some expression of child's pose. So you can stretch those arms way out. You can drape them by your side, or you can use a fist or your fists to prop up your forehead.
Coming back up into an all fours position, bringing those feet hip joint distance apart, and then curling those toes under. After you walk your wrists slightly ahead of your shoulders and press back to downward facing. Again, lengthening the arms, lengthening the spine. Your head should naturally fall right in between your arms. Dropping down into an all fours position. And then taking that right hand with your palm facing the ceiling, I'm going to thread it through. So coming into thread the needle, taking that hand just by your inner elbow and rooting down into the floor. Unthreading and trying the same thing on the other side. So taking that left hand, palm facing upward, threading through, bringing that right hand closer to your inside elbow and pressing into the floor, enjoying the stretch through the shoulder and through the back. And coming back up. And then taking those hands slightly ahead of your wrists, coming back to another downward facing dog. Holding that downward facing dog. dropping those knees. This time, walking those hands back out for another puppy dog. And then taking your right hand, threading the needle in a puppy dog pose. This time, that left arm stays long in that puppy dog position. Coming up and switching sides. Same thing, left arm threads through. Unthreading, bringing those hands back up to an all fours position. And then, Sitting back in Virasana. Now, this pose may not be comfortable for everyone. You may do well sitting on a pillow or a block. I'm going to put mine right behind, right between my ankles. If you are in true Virasana, your heels fall just outside your hips with parallel thighs. Lifting through the crown of your head up to the ceiling. You may also end up wanting a strap for this one, some sort of belt. Inhale, sweeping those arms up, and exhaling, bending that right arm just as we did before. Now modify, you can come back into that same tricep stretch that we were in a little bit earlier. Or, if you'd like, and you can always use a strap to 
create a little bit more difficulty, but not quite to the part where you do bind your fingers together. Taking the fingers so that they are pointing down, and then using that strap and coming up your back. So you can see that I'm using that strap as a lengthener. So this adds, obviously, a little bit more. You should feel the stretch through your upper tricep, through your lower shoulder. Holding these, these are cow face arms. And release and sort of just shaking that out. Inhale, sweeping those arms up, letting those arms frame your ears. This time, bending that left arm, and again, maybe you come it into that modified little tricep stretch, or taking that opposite arm, reaching it behind you. Trying to get your upper arm bones fairly vertical. If the fingers seem rather far away tonight, then just grab hold of that strap. Make yourself an extension. And again, keep breathing space into the front body. arms and bringing yourself back into an all fours position. And then you may or may not feel like blocks would be beneficial. We're going to take that right foot and we're going to step it forward into a knee down lunge. So you can do so with your hands on the floor or if you find that you just can't get that right leg moving, blocks help because they give you a little increased height. Front knee over front ankle, coming up. Inhale, sweeping those arms up. Inhaling, lengthening that spine. Exhale, dropping through those hips. Exhale, bringing those hands behind you, interlacing those fingers. Now, you can simply interlace your fingers, press your knuckles down and back. Or, if that isn't working, grabbing hold of a belt or a towel, anything will work. Your thumbs are facing outward so that your palms face forward. Press those knuckles down and back. Once again, Opening through the front body, gently pulling the heads of the shoulders back, contracting the upper back, engaging those upper back muscles will help you here. And release. And taking those hands down beside that front foot, taking that front leg, sliding it back, taking that back leg, sliding it forward. And again, inhale, sweeping those arms up, inhaling through the arms and spine, exhaling through those hips. Exhale, sweep those hands down behind you, interlace those fingers, and press those knuckles down and down. Use a strap if you're feeling a little restricted.
and take those hands, bring them down inside that front foot. This time I'm going to curl that back to under, lift that back knee, step that back foot forward to come into a forward fold on that mat. Place your hands on blocks or place your hands on the floor. Inhale, heart forward, head forward. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, sweeping those arms up. And exhaling those arms down, standing nice and tall in a mountain pose. And then, stepping out nice and wide on your mat, Starting off with your feet parallel to each other. If you have a block, you may want to place it behind your right leg. Externally rotate that right leg so that the toes point out to the side. Now, moving that opposite heel a little closer to the back end of the mat or the front end, depending on where you start. Sweep those arms out to the side. And spin that rib cage toward the long end of your mat. Now bringing the left arm into internal rotation taking that hand behind you and then grabbing hold of, some people will grab hold of their waistband in the back. So I'll just turn around so you can see what I'm talking about. You may grab your waistband or you may be able to get a little further along and grab the side of that hip. So you decide, keeping those ribs squared to the long end of the mat, keeping the waist long, coming into a variation of triangle. So if it is too much, by all means, release that arm or go a little bit closer to your spine. Try to get a little, not quite as far moving toward your hip. Obviously that adds more intensity the further back you reach. In this move, you have to think about really pressing that upper shoulder back and spiraling that rib cage up and back. Continuing to open up that front body. And then releasing that arm, reaching it up to the ceiling, and palm facing down, reaching that arm by your ear. And then you're going to allow that upper arm to fall toward the floor and lift you up, parallel those feet again, dropping those arms down. Trying the other side. So, externally rotating that left leg, toes point out to the side of the mat, that back heel moves a little closer to the end of the mat. Now take those ribs, square those ribs toward the long end of the mat. Take those arms out to the side, square your ribs. Now, internally rotating that right arm Grab hold of your waistband or grab hold of that outer hip. You decide. Keeping both sides of the torso long, keeping that left arm nice and long, let that left arm guide you out. And coming into some form of triangle. So obviously a variation on that triangle.
encouraging that upper shoulder to press toward the back. Rib cage spiraling, spiraling up and around. Trying to keep that waist as long as possible through both sides of your torso. And then releasing that arm, bringing it up to the ceiling. And then palm faces the floor, nice long line by your ear. If doing this makes you drop your upper shoulder or your upper rib cage forward, then choose a different variation. Take that arm, allow it to circle to the floor, lifting you up, coming back into that parallel stance. So, you stay here. I'm going to spin to the side so that hopefully you have a little better angle of what we're going to do next. From here, in this wide leg stance, you're going to drop down into a wide leg forward fold. So, as you can see, my hips and my ankles here are in the same plane. It's not that they're at an incline or a diagonal like they are when I am in down dog. This is where you want to be and you want to try to parallel your feet to the floor. So anchoring those hips where they are, walk those hands forward so it's like your upper body is in down dog, your lower body is in a forward fold. Or you could say it's your upper body is in puppy dog. And your lower body is in that wide leg forward fold. Now, similar, yet a little different than what we did before when we thread the needle. The rotation is going to be the same. And modified, you're simply going to take that right hand and you're going to reach it toward that left foot. Those of you who are able to, you're going to grab hold of that outer ankle. Twist it. And coming back. Now you may want to walk those hands in. Maybe shake your hips from side to side before embarking on the other side. Or some of you may be ready to go. From here, walking those hands forward again. This time, taking that left hand, reaching it toward that right foot, if you're able to, grab hold of that ankle. Twisting and still reaching long through the spine and the arm. And release, walking those hands in, walking those feet in, heart forward, head forward, fold forward, inhale, sweep those arms up, exhale those arms down, and then again, inhaling those arms up, exhaling those arms down, and coming back into an all fours position, letting those hips fall back toward those heels, resting in a child's pose of some type.
and coming up into a seated position. Feel free to sit on a pillow or a blanket if you find that that helps. If you have a block, you may want it. But coming into a seated position, and if you have a block or a couple of blocks, depending on your flexibility, folding forward and just allowing your head and neck, upper back, shoulders to completely relax. As you do this, try to flex those feet and pull those pinky toes back with the same amount of enthusiasm that you're pulling back through those big toes. slowly lifting up out of that and then grabbing hold of a block or a pillow or a folded blanket and coming into a supine position bending those legs planting those feet though and placing whatever you grabbed between your inner thighs so it's basically just there as a spacer, keeping your thigh bones hip joint distance apart. That's our, our objective here. So again, a pillow will work, a towel will work, obviously a block will work. And then allowing those arms to fall out to the side with your palms facing upward. Maybe they're in goal posts, maybe they're straight out like a T. Up to you. And then lift those feet up off the floor, allow those legs to drop to the right. So some days we focus primarily on the twist in this one. And the twist is beautiful and it's lovely and it has so many benefits. We'll continue to embrace the twist, but today we'll really focus on our chest, our shoulders, and maybe into our neck. As we've spent all this time focusing on moving and opening neck, shoulders, the chest, the upper back. Do you notice any differences in that area? If you compare how it feels now with how it felt at the beginning of class. Hopefully the answer is yes, even if it's a subtle little yes. And then bringing those legs up to center. Continuing to keep the back of the shoulders grounded. Allow those legs to drop to the left. find space in your shoulders, in your chest. The 
You can gaze anywhere you'd like, but if you're comfortable, you may want to gaze away from your legs. And then bringing those legs up to the center. And grounding those feet. And eventually extending those legs. You may want to place a prop under your legs. Or you may be happy just laying on your mat. in a completely supine position. Allow those palms to turn upward facing. Continuing to facilitate the opening of that front body. Continuing to pay attention to the present. Notice your breath. Try to allow yourself to completely relax while you're here. unless you absolutely need to hold on to it. Letting it go, if only for a few minutes. And then eventually, bringing movement back into your fingers and your toes. And then moving your arms and your legs. Rolling over to one side and eventually coming up into a seated position. And just as we started, moving through few spinal circles. And then switch direction. And then lengthening that spine, once again lifting up through the top of your head. The light within me salutes the light within you. Namaste. Thank you for practicing with me tonight. Um, please comment, let me know that <laughs> you were there. Um, please share with anyone who you think might benefit and Take care of yourself. Have a lovely evening and we'll see you soon. Bye.